Okay, Jen, it's really when you are. ready. Okay. Yeah. Well, Alex, let's start first of all with your visit here to Carlisle. Why Carlisle and why this city and what is your particular message to this city? Well, why today, St George's Day? This is the right time to, to make a, a speech in England as, as First Minister of Scotland. Why Carlisle? Because the northwest of England and is our closest neighbour. And the point I wanted to make after Scotland becomes independent, it'll still be our closest neighbour and our best friends. And that's the essential point I was making in the speech tonight. Two points that people will bring up here in Carlisle when they speak to you, other politicians, in relation to this debate. The border. People are fearful that there will be a border created just up the road. That will affect people here in this area. What do you say to them? Well, there'll be no border. No more than there is between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Uh, nor do we regard people on these islands as going to be foreigners. I mean, interestingly enough, Westminster way back in, in the 1940s, when they designated the Irish Republic, said they are not foreigners. So, and that was under infinitely more difficult circumstances than we face. So why on earth would any rational person want borders and customs posts? These days are long over. It will be the same relationship as we have with the Irish Republic at the present moment, and people will trade freely uh, between Scotland and England. The family will come to Carlisle, and Carlisle folk will go up to Edinburgh or Glasgow. All of that will continue unhindered. What will change is the economic centre of gravity of these islands. Now that's going to be great for Scotland, but I think it's good for the north of England as well, which is why I was spelling out some of the transport projects that we can give impetus to, to make sure that connectivity is there, so that this part of England can benefit from the success of Scotland. Two final points. There's going to be a lot up for negotiation come the, the day that Scotland may vote for independence mm. on in September. As part of those negotiations, would you consider taking back the nuclear waste that Scotland has produced historically? A lot of that waste is stored at Sellafield. Well, it's not a question of the... I mean, I don't believe in transportation of nuclear waste, uh, but what I will say is I believe in above-ground storage and we'll accept responsibility for our uh, nuclear material. As you know, the Scottish Government are strongly against... Uh, nuclear power and the principal reason we're against it is because there's no, be no adequate position given in economic terms or in other terms about what to do with the, the waste. So, we'll, so Scotland would accept its share? We'll accept a share of the waste we're generating now, we'll store it above ground where it should be stored, where it can be monitored and can be done safely. We accept our responsibilities but I'm not against transportation wherever possible of nuclear materials. Final point in relation to the family ties, this is more about just business isn't it? Do you believe that those family ties between the north of England and Scotland would be strengthened by an independent Scotland? Uh, I think the economy will be strengthened and I think the family ties will continue. People from Scotland will come to Carlisle Cathedral here to get married. Some folk from Carlisle may nip up to Gretna to get married. The visitations will continue. The business relations continue. All of that And you're not continue. driving a wedge? No, on the contrary. We are saying that, look, between Scotland and the north of England, with that economic growth, we can create the, the northern light to counterbalance the the forces of economic gravity, the dark star, which draws wealth away from this area and into London. Thank you, Mr. Salmond. Hope to see you again. Thank you. Okay.